There we go. What do we think of the uh, the new setup here? Not bad, eh? So I'll try filming on my camera this time as it might make a difference. And I kind of like the angle with the lights. Anyway, today's video, we're talking about night mode with the DJI Air 3. And we're gonna be covering both photo and video. I, so I have flown this drone twice. The first time is obviously the initial test to figure what settings would be. And then the second flight is really just confirming that my getting the same results. If you are a returning viewer, thanks very much. It does mean a lot. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Dimitrios. I create videos on drones, photography, and everything in between. And it's a mix of entertaining and educational content. Since purchasing the Air 3, I've been overwhelmed with all its functions and features. So I thought, why not just share my journey learning this drone with you guys? So if, if that's something you're interested in, hit the like button to let other people know that you like this video so they can see it, and then subscribe for future videos. Now, let's talk about night mode. Now on my first flight, I launched a drone with no filter and at 12 megapixels, you can act, capture an eight second exposure. And when I previewed this, the image was totally blown out. So I, I landed back down, put the N, an ND16 on uh, to see if that would be needed for the longer exposure. Uh, again, after repeating that same task of taking a eight second photo with a 12 megapixel camera, it came out pretty good. And after some editing, nice. So what I did here is obviously I just carried around using the photo modes and I tried in auto and then I also tried in manual mode sticking to it to auto shutter uh, with ISO 100 or then auto ISO and just getting all these variations to see which one would give me the best results and, and obviously some of them don't need to be always a long exposure right you can just put auto shutter to see if what the image would look like with a faster shutter a low ISO just how they play with it basically. So from my findings, and I was like zooming in and pixel peeping with both the 12 and 48 megapixel camera, from my findings I found that if auto is fine, you'll get some good images, but the auto ISO actually bumps up quite a bit. So you do notice the grain, but the images come out really nice. If you were posting that on social media, you'll be fine. If you wanted to control the ISO so you don't get too much noise, keeping it at 100 I have found is much better than putting it on auto ISO. Even though it says the ISO is like maybe 200 or 300, it comes out at 100 sometimes. So just because what it says on screen doesn't mean it's gonna be captured at that ISO. That is one thing I noticed in pro or manual mode. I feel like some of the images that I was looking at with a higher ISO, like maybe 250 or 500 or 800, the images tends to be a little bit sharper. Whereas I, ISO 100, they don't, seem to have as much clarity but it's a fine balance like either or you get it's, it's the balance of whether you want the sharpness or the grain you can use AI denoise in Lightroom to help reduce the amount of noise in your picture but people tend to add grain nowadays anyway so it's it's not that bad most of those images in the first batch were with ND16 so pretty nice results there uh, some after post-production in Lightroom as well. They, they came out really lovely and I posted these on my Instagram as well because I was happy with them eventually. Again, even though they were a test, I was still happy with it. Both focal lengths, the 24 and the 70 mil, performed really well. I didn't notice too much of a difference with the 70 mil as it has a smaller aperture. So that's something to note. I really like the 70 mil photos. They just come out so well. It's such a unique and different perspective to the 24. There's nothing wrong with the 24, it's just, this is different. It's just not something that we don't see all the time. So it's the depth, it's really good. And I'm surprised at night it held its own, even in video, which we'll be discussing in a bit. My recommendation is if you're somewhere where there's a lot of light pollution, like a city like Toronto, then you'll probably be balancing between an ND8, ND16, especially with the longer exposures. So take that into consideration. If you're somewhere with less light pollution, where there's, there's less lights basically, then probably ND8 max you will need because um, there's, there's not gonna be too much light coming to the camera for those longer exposures, of course. But feel free to test as well. If you're gonna fly the drone at night and pick one filter, pick the ND8. I did try as well auto exposure bracketing and 
I'll be honest, I wasn't that impressed with it. At night, you're better off as, with a single shot rather than AEB. Like the image came out super grainy and even with some noise reduction, just wasn't great. Another thing to add about the 70mm is that it's what sets the Air 3 apart from the Mini 3 Pro. Like that 70mm is such a big difference. So lean, lean on that 70mm because it's so nice. Oh, this one's a fun one as well. So when I was taking photos, so at night you don't have any obstacle avoidance. So if you're a beginner flyer, I don't recommend flying at night because all of a sudden, obstacles that are already hard to see in the day become totally invisible at night. Power lines, for instance. So unless you know the area very well in the day and you can navigate that at night, then yes, you'll be more comfortable, but it's really hard, especially when you put an ND8, ND16 in your camera viewfinder, is obviously a lot darker, so it makes, it makes it hard to see obstacles. And so, as I was saying before, I just had to mention that, is when taking photos, after the photo was taken, I did notice drifting from the drone. I don't know, I don't think this has any difference to do with autofocus or manual focus. It would still drift. Um, so yeah, it just does it occasionally. So the photos, if you're aiming for a phone and it's drifting, then obviously you can use it as an artistic technique. But the one I took of the CN Tower, even though it drifted, I kind of like it. Most, actually a lot of people that I knew messaged me loving that photo. So, I don't know, let me know. Go check out my Instagram and see what you think. talk about video with the DJI Air 3. Now on the first flight I did shoot um, just a normal profile because I didn't want to like overwhelm myself using D-Log as well. I did do that in the second flight though but so we'll come to that in a bit. ND16 is way too dark for video. Don't. If you've got the maximum you can go with video is an ND8 by the way. So either no ND or ND8. Again, depending on light pollution. So again, I wanted to test whether normal or night mode was good. If it's really dark, you've got to go to night mode. If it's low light, so maybe twilight for instance, and the sun just went down, you'll get away with normal, um, but you're like teetering between normal and night mode. I obviously did the same again, where with night mode, I tested auto and manual mode or pro mode. If you want to do just night shots, you'll be fine with auto. Auto performed very well. You're gonna notice obviously some grain, but when you start playing around with manual, you'll probably notice it more in there as you try and figuring it out, but auto performed amazing. Like if you just wanna concentrate on the flying and not hit anything because it is a challenge flying at night, you'll be fine with auto. It is such, such good quality. I don't think people will realize even if you tried to sell that footage. However, if you wanna have more control, like controlling your shutter, then we're gonna to have to go to manual or pro mode as they say it. Let me know which you rather call it. I don't know why, I call it manual because it is. So at first, I obviously did double my frame rate. So if I'm shooting a 4K 30, one over 60 is my shutter. Now it's a challenge because the ISO has to bump up quite a bit to contemplate for the faster shutter. There's less light allowed to go in there. In manual mode, you can put on auto ISO and just keep an eye on where it is. I tend to find auto ISO wasn't that great. Your, because it's fluctuating all the time. So you're gonna have grain in some parts and no grain. So it's just, there's no consistency there. So I've been trying to find out what the native ISO is as well, because it's not listed on DJI's website uh, or in their manual. So it's like, what is this dual native ISO? What's the two points that are gonna give me the less grain? From my testing, I feel like 800 was just still not an, enough. Uh, to allow more light in. I feel like 1600 and 3200 gave me the best results. More so 1600, but there is moments with the 30, ISO 3200 was good as well. And this is the normal profile mode. If you're shooting a D-Log M, it can only go up to 1600. These are my findings of what I've had so far, probably from all the videos that I'm playing back now. Let me know what you think is the best. Like what I have done as well in DaVinci because I'm still not a pro yet either in color grading. So this is a video I will be doing in the future. So what I did in DaVinci with the normal profile, I just uh, increased the exposure just a tiny bit because when you increase it too much, it becomes, it doesn't look good at all. You can see a lot of grain. And if it was in D-Log M, I did a luck conversion 
Do you know what? D-Log M at night looks really good, but it's obviously flat still. When you use DJI's D-Log M to Rec 709 LUT, which is free, it does it darkens the image. You have to like brighten it up now. So I was playing around with all the wheels. I kept it simple just for now for testing purposes, like just bringing up the exposure and the shadows a little bit just to make it comparable. So let me know what you think. Now, again, obviously I tested both 24 and 70 mil. The 24 has the wider aperture, so it's gonna have less of an issue dealing with, with light. I didn't find the 70 mil with at f2.8, didn't do too bad. And it, the shots was obviously, again, you're getting that new, unique perspective that you don't normally see. It just looks way better. So you all suddenly, you don't, you don't, I don't know, your mind's taken away. You don't really notice it because you're, you think the image is cool. This is such an unplanned video. like threw my thoughts on down and I'm trying to do this video. So also I'm planning to dive deeper into post-processing and color grading in DaVinci Resolve. So stay tuned for my upcoming tutorials on that. And don't forget to subscribe and let me know in the comments what you would like to learn. So let's recap the findings here. For me personally, I think shooting in auto is fine for photos. If you're gonna be doing long exposure with the 12 megapixel camera at eight seconds, you're gonna need an ND8 or ND16. You're gonna have less noise at ISO 100. The images won't be as sharp. Using a little bit of ISO will help get some sharpness, but you'll be adding some grain. The 48 megapixels were nice too at two seconds. Obviously, it's not long enough of a shutter to get the really long lines unless it's a faster moving subject. If I was to take photos at night, just regular photos that aren't low exposure, in the manual mode, I would probably just keep it at ISO 100 and just use auto shutter. If you're gonna only use one ND filter, use ND8. ISO 1600 or 3200 seems to be, to me, that gives the least amount of noise in the video. And if you're shooting a D-Log M, it only maxes out at ISO 1600. And I can't believe the construction started. All right, that wraps it up for today's video. I'm eager to hear your thoughts. What settings do you think gave the best results from what you saw on this video? And what settings would you recommend? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for joining me today. If you found this video helpful, remember to give it a like, subscribe for future content, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.